Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's lecture. So today we are going to be going through the next step of chapter eight here, continuing chromosomal rearrangement. So last chapter, not last chapter, last lecture, we talked about the duplications. And today we're going to be going into deletions and inversions. The only one left after this are translocations. So just as a refresher, uh, right now we are focused on rearrangement still for chromosomal alterations or you know variations. Uh, so again, this is a change in structure of the chromosome. We haven't gotten aneuploidies or polyploidies quite yet. And then last time, again, we talked about duplications where part of the chromosome is doubled. Today, we are focused on deletions and inversions. So deletion is when part of the chromosome is lost, and an inversion is when part of the chromosome is reversed by 180 degrees. So it flips around. So we're going to talk about a little bit about how that could happen and also um, the effects that could happen for gene dosage and on the individual. And then next video, we'll go over translocations and the significance of these rearrangements. So translocation, again, is when part of a chromosome is moved to a non-homologue or a different location on the same chromosome. All right, first one I wanted to talk about today are these deletions. So I made you know a fake chromosome here. So a deletion is when, again, part of the segment of the chromosome is deleted. So I, I labeled a couple different genes here. So hypothetical genes A through G. And here a deletion took place between D and G. So we lost E and F. If we lose E and F, these would be the resulting chromosome. So there'd be no E and F gene. So remember, you get one of these from one parent and one from the other parent. So one from the mother, one from the father. So it's possible that only one version of that chromosome gets a deletion. So maybe the mother's chromosome gets a deletion of E and F and the father's chromosome is fine. So what does that affect of having one less chromosome with those genes due to the individual? And the answer is it depends. It depends on the gene. Um, so if we're looking at the effects, again, it def highly depends on that gene being lost. So different locations where it could happen too. So here, if there's a centromere deletion, so let's say there, this centromere was deleted right there, what would that cause? The problem with a centromere deletion would be during mitosis. Remember how important the centromere is during mitosis? So the spindle fibers come out, connect to the kinetic core, and then separate the sister chromatids for mitosis for cell division. So in a, if there's a centromere deletion, there'd be a loss of the chromosome during cell division. And that loss of chromosome during cell division would typically just lead to cell death and apoptosis if it's a just one cell. Now, if that's a, a germline cell that's going to be fertilized, then that would cause, cause severe developmental effects depending on which chromosome might be lost in that manner. And if the other one is still present. Next, so other effects here, many deletions are lethal. So meaning not able to survive. Now, you know, what if they aren't? Why, what would make them lethal? The biggest effect here is on gene dosage. So because we lose one of the alleles, gene dosage drops. And so depending on the situation, the, the individual might be okay if gene dosage drops for a particular gene or enzyme. You know, when you have a heterozygous individual, technically this one doesn't work properly. So technically that's a drop in gene dosage. So that individual still can survive just fine. But if it's an important developmental gene, it might not work correctly. And you need both dominant genes in order for proper uh, development and developmental cues. Uh, so mainly we're here, we're talking about heterozygotes in this. So then the next example here is pseudodominance. And we talked about this one previously, and remember this is when if the only allele present is dominant, it has the deletion in it, then that makes both recessive. So if only allele is recessive, then it's expressed. Meaning if you do have this heterozygous form and this one gets the deletion, then it becomes expressed. Or for or pseudodominance more in fact, if it depends on which parent passed it on, it could so we talked about the goats, where it depends on the sex of the individual. So if it's sex dependent for that particular chromosome, for that particular gene, and the father's version is the one that gets the deletion, and the father's one is one that's expressed, then 
that's what it is. So remember, pseudo-dominance. You can go back to one of the previous lectures to check that one out. Uh, next example here is called haploinsufficiency. This is when two copies of a gene are needed, even if different alleles. And again, I hinted at this one before for development. So for some, some proteins in development require both copies of that gene to be working properly. So deletions can be, can be lethal, but if gene dosage isn't a super negative effect, then it's okay. And then, like I said here, others may cause these developmental effects. A few examples of these are Creduquat uh, syndrome. This is an, a deletion on the P arm of chromosome five. So remember, P arm is the short arm. So this is chromosome five here. There'd be a small deletion on the top and this leads to extreme developmental abnormalities in these individuals. Um, so remember, this is the P arm here, and this would be chromosome number five this occurs on. So you could see this in a karyotype. I talked about this. Uh, no, I didn't talk about this one before. I did talk about Engelman versus prater willi syndrome for talking about um, genetic, genomic imprinting related expression levels. So Engelman and prater willi occur on the same chromosome. They are deletion on the long arm of chromosome number 15. So you, know, you have a short arm and then the long arm. Now, depending on which parent passes this on, depends on which you know, disease that it leads into. I'll, I'll link the video where I talked about Engelman and prater willi and sex-related extensions of inheritance. Uh, we talked about that video a few chapters or talked about this information a few chapters ago where this genomic imprinting, it depends on which what the parent of origin is. So uh, for Engelman, so paternal, paternal, let's start with paternal for P, is prater willi. So if the father inherits the deletion on chromosome 15, the offspring will have prater willi syndrome. If the mother inherits the deletion on chromosome 15, then the offspring will have Engelman syndrome. The, the uh, syndromes are slightly similar, but they do have their slightly different phenotypic effects on the outcome. Again, you can go back to that uh, previous video to go over this into a little bit more detail, but just some developmental defects due to deletions and the significance of deletions here. So that's all I have on deletions and deletions could happen randomly. It could be a, you know, we talked about reasons for these rearrangements and how they could occur a uh, big one here would be incorrect crossing over events where, you know, this exchange didn't occur properly and we lost a section of the DNA. Now, next type here are inversions. Remember, we're talking about deletions and inversions today and saving translocations for the last one. So here we have the same chromosome and now we're looking at this region right here between genes uh, D and F. So an inversion is when this is chopped and then what can happen is the loops form in the DNA. When this loops out, it can actually rotate around and invert itself. So you don't duplicate any genes here, just everything is backwards now. So if you look, I kept the letters backwards as well here, and this can have multiple different effects. So it all depends. Some, it depends on the promoters. So this could have, so here there's, there's no loss or gain in DNA. And now we have to read this direction if we want to express those genes. And sometimes that can be possible and sometimes that might not be possible. And so this is the dangerous part with inversions. Now there are two main types of inversions. There's para-centric and peri-centric. So para means next to. So the parasympathetic nervous system is next to the sympathetic nervous system. So parasympathetic does not include centromere. So this is kind of what we drew up here. It does not remember this right here is the centromere on this chromosome. So if we had A, B, C, D, E, F here, like not including G here, um, a paracentric, let's say there's a, you know, inversion between B and C, we'd have A, C, B, D, E, F. So not including the centromere right here. Whereas pericentric, peri means around, Pericentric includes the centromere. So it's around the centromere. So if we had A, B, C, D, E, F here again, this would become, let's say now there's a you know inversion between C and D. 
have um, or, or let's do C D E here. Let's make it a bit longer. C D E. This section right here, we then have A, B, E, D, C, F as our final result here. So this occurred around the centromere. This one's a little bit more dangerous because now we're changing maybe potentially the type of chromosome and the P arm and the Q arm, and they might no longer correctly line up for homologous pair and crossing over in the next round of meiosis. So that one could be dangerous for that reason too. Now effects here, again, no loss or gain in DNA, but because of this inversion, it may disrupt genes. And then that could also lead to some position effects. So the um, expression may then be locus dependent. So I know we haven't got into gene expression yet, but important transcription factors are needed for a transcription activation. Uh, and so stuff needs to get there into the right spot. And this flipping around might put it in an incorrect spot. So again, the big thing with inversions is that it depends. Um, so it depends on the gene that inverts and so forth. I don't have any direct examples of inversions today, but I just wanted to bring inversions to your attention as potential alterations in DNA, and then talk about the two different forms, paracentric and pericentric. If one was to be more severe, I'd say it would be the pericentric inversion. Um, so we went over these, the effects of these, and then we talked about uh, deletions today. So a short little video. Next time, we're again, we're going to go into translocation. That's where we're moving to a completely different chromosome. And then we're going to talk about the significance of these rearrangements. And like always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But that's all I have for this video. And I hope you all have a great day and bye-bye.